Welcome to Sober Doc Coffee, a weekly coffee chat sharing experience, strength, and hope for anyone on the sober road to recovery. You can download Sober Doc Coffee weekly on all podcast platforms and check us out on Instagram at Sober Doc Coffee Podcast and on Twitter at Sober Coffee Pod. To learn more about us and to help support these sessions, visit online at Sober Doc Coffee. Here are your hosts, two guys on their own path to recovery, Mike and Glenn. Let's join them at the coffee shop. Glenn. What's up, Chief? A.M., A.M., it's storming outside. No, absolutely, man. We uh, pulled up in the parking lot this morning, you know, and, and just uh, a little behind the counter. We get here early. Right. Like, like we uh, tee off at 6 a.m. So we're uh, excited. Yeah, can't wait. And we usually do it on Saturdays. So anyhow, we pull up in the parking lot. We get the tornado. We're in uh, Chicago land. Uh, we get uh, the tornado uh, warnings. And uh, yeah, we just posted on Instagram the weather map. <laughs> so, so far, everything's going and... Brian's got some challenges on the uh, power surge front. and But if it starts raining in your car while you're listening, it's our fault. It's totally our fault. You're yeah. right. We own the or weather. Or you've gone through a car wash with your windows <laughs> down. One of the two things have happened. That's awesome, man. So, brother, it's good seeing you. We haven't been in the studio for a while. It's just to let everyone know, it's kind of summertime, 2022, and we're in the studio. You know, this thing probably won't, you know, post till 2027, but... I mean, hey, so, brother, it's great to get in the, uh, the studio. So I, so I have to ask. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, part of the reason why we've been out of the studio, and, and w- one of our early commitments is that we were going to post every week. We weren't going to miss. Right. Uh, but, but the way we kind of tee it up is we'll record, you know, 10 in two weeks and then, right. So Mikey w- went on a nice uh, retreat. Yeah, right? yeah. To uh, upper Wisconsin, which is uh, kind of God's place up there. Even know. further north, Michigan. For all our no, really? listeners, yeah, I'm above the border. I'm, I'm uh, so you're to above Lake Wisconsin Superior. in the yeah. Michigan. Ah, I yeah. never knew you were in Michigan. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the way I, I've never been there, but the way I understand it, it's uh, remote. Oh, it's so remote. It's so remote. I, Ton I of nature. Don't even get sick phone signal. Come on, now. It's 2022. Yeah, I try to say that in my house, but that doesn't work. It doesn't fly. People don't believe that, right? But uh, so, t- t- tell me about it. How was it? Yeah, you know, it, relaxing. Uh, yeah, it was. It, you know, like anything else, it takes a while to adjust, right? Just like sobriety, right? It took a while to adjust to a new way of living. So you get up there and you got no phone coverage. I got the phone in my hand. I'm expecting a text every twelve and a half seconds. I'm expecting an email every twenty three and point four seconds. So that's habit. I'm yeah, it's just a habit. And I'm like, well, I, I got to Google something, you know? <laughs> I got to. <laughs> okay, I gotta f- find my app. I've got I've I got stuff to do, don't you know? And uh, but it was I'm really, important. It's really God's way of t- telling me slow down, take it easy. I mean, we're talking up there. There's black bear and deer and and wild turkeys and eagles and it and stars. You know, just so what did it do for your soul? Oh, you know, it's a reset. Nice, nice. So, w- was there an actual day? That you did not touch your phone at all. Yeah, it it took oh, me honestly. That. It I took me. It, it took me. Days. Yeah, it took yeah. me about three four days. I would say probably Before you realize on the, your phone on the way on the way home. Right, I'm like, okay, <laughs> That's awesome. maybe I can leave my phone off now. No, I, it was about three four five days, and and I'm like, okay, you know what, I'm I'm here. Just <clears throat> stop, relax, awesome. and, and take it in. So thanks for asking. Well, great. I missed you, man. I missed you. You know, you you up there for two weeks. It feels like two months, and. Uh, you know, great to have you back. Yeah, it's good to great be back. Great to have you back. Good to be so back. what's uh, what's on deck today? What are we going to talk about? You know, this is a kind of a, uh, uh, we talked about what topics and, you know, a real hot topic. I know at least in the clubs that I go to and, you know, having gone to a couple of meetings in my life, you hear a lot of talk and um, I'm dual diagnosed, right? So um, I've got- Just I've, dual? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an underachiever. I can't wait to hear your story on this. <laughs> oh, but. Geez. Um, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've been diagnosed with bipolar, uh, at least a, a form of it. And, and, uh, I do take meds, uh, for my bipolar. I know that, um, I know it's, it's a topic. It's, it's a, it's, it's a touchy topic and, and people like are ashamed of it. And I was one of those people, Glenn, for years, I was ashamed that, you know, I've got this thing that I'm just not right, you know? And, um, so I'm on meds and of course, like anything else, I want to be off the meds because I don't want to be one of those. I don't want to be that. So I want to be off the meds because I'm feeling fine. Why do I need the meds? Hello? You need the meds because you're feeling fine. You're feeling fine because you got the meds. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. I um, I love the band Blue October. Mm-hmm. Justin, I can never say his last name, Justin Furferfeld. 
Um, I'm, I'm actually going to see them in Chicago August 4th. I can't wait. For, for fun. So much good sobriety music, you know, mm-hmm. and, and he's in sobriety. He's got like uh, eight or nine years. And through COVID, I remember through COVID, it was really cool. I mean, he's a great singer. But through COVID, like every Tuesday night, he would do a live simulcast of Steps, mm-hmm. right? And um, he's still diagnosed. He's got all kinds of stuff, right? Um, and um, I just forgot what I was going to say. So, yeah. oh, well. Well, I think it's. It was a great point, though, man. Oh, I'm spot on. <laughs> Listeners, please check back yeah. on episode 99 when yeah. we come back to that point. Um, yeah, no, I think that uh, I think it's a lot of people are. You know, I, I did a little Googling, uh, not when I was up in the Northwoods, but uh, mental illness uh, is more prevalent than cancer, diabetes, or heart disease. Did you know that? I mean, the di- the, the, the no, statistic- it's funny you hear more about cancer and diabetes, though. Yeah, sure you do. Right. You know, I think that's the uh, stigma. That's the st- that's the word I was looking for. Stigma. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I did my little Google and you know, dual diagnosis is any mental condition along with alcohol or drug addiction. Addiction. And he said half of the people that are alcoholics or drug addicts have dual diagnosis. Mm. Right. They have other mental conditions. Um, you know, and. and and what popped out, the most prevalent ones were depression and anxiety. Anxiety, sure. You know? Yeah. Um, but there, there's, a, there's a guy I know you're going to help me with this, uh, Dr. John, who we know really well. Mm-hmm. Um, he said that alcoholism is a great masquerader of mental issues. Absolutely. Right? Said, yes, that's what you got it right. Yeah. So, so let me jump in with kind of my, my story and you know, you, you had a lot of diagnosis, um, and, and you're bipolar, you take meds today and then we'll touch on that a little bit here, but, um, you know, along the way, you know, and, and, you know, if you've been on the podcast a little bit, you heard my story, you know, I saw a lot of doctors, you know, a lot of those professional know-it-alls. Um, and I came out with a lot of sexy words. Mm-hmm. Here's a short list of my sexy words. Ready? Okay. Bipolar. Heard that a lot of times. Sure. Gad. Okay. GAD, is general, there, is general there an ointment for that. <laughs> no, but there's pills. Okay. General anxiety disorder. Okay. I was diagnosed mild schizophrenic. All right. I was diagnosed with anxiety mm-hmm. and major depressive disorder. Okay. Now, <clears throat> there are a lot of words, aren't they? Yeah. So that's like uh, I don't know what the word for six, but you know, six way diagnosis, mm-hmm. right? Plus mm-hmm. alcoholism. Now, I see that you're getting ready to stand up and leave because you're thinking I'm just an absolute whack job sitting here. No, I get it. No, I know I know you better. So I, I, I'm guessing some of those diagnoses were incorrect, me knowing you. Or, or, yeah, so, or at least. Yeah, so, so let's touch on that. That is, that is an amazing statement. Um, so here are doctors mm-hmm. that went to medical school that people put a lot of trust in. Mm-hmm. And, and what is factual today is they were wrong. You were none of those things. I was none of those things. Right. As I sit here today, mm-hmm. I have none of those. Now, what I will say is I have none of those today because I got sober. Mm-hmm. They weren't my issues. Drinking was my issue. Right. So you acted like those right. under, under the exactly. spell of alcohol. Right. And, hey, I had hole in the soul issues and all that kind of right. stuff. Sure. Right. But that was soul issues, not mental issues. Right, right. So, you know, so through getting sober and working the steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, I am none of those today. So here's here's my question, <clears throat> because I sit. Wait, can you? Yes, can, go ahead. Can I Absolutely. jump in real quick? Yeah. Because of those five, because I think this is important before we, we tear it apart. Because of those five or six, five or six diagnosis. Um, you know, doctors being the professionals that they are, at least the doctors that I had, my experience, and that's all I can share is my experience, they were pill throwers. Mm-hmm. That's what I call them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're, I heard it many times, Glenn, Glenn, it's dosage and time. We got to increase your dosage and we got to, you know, more time you will come around, yes. right? So here they're taking Glenn, instead of the easy answer, Go to AA, mm-hmm. get yourself dry, mm-hmm. and then and then hey, once you're sober six months or a year, let's sit down and try to figure out if you got any of these conditions. Right. Instead of doing that, you know, in their wisdom, um, 
you know, fake wisdom, they threw pills. Right. And at one point, I was on 11 pills. Mm-hmm. And this is 2010. Because once you take one, you got to take another one to counteract the side oh, effects sure. of that one. And then, mm-hmm. hey, I'm two up. Okay, we got to give this to bring it down. Okay, now I'm two down. I mean, give this to bring it up. Mm-hmm. Right? And let's try to my. I mean, and, and I had, I was a chemistry experiment. Mm-hmm. And I went into rehab in 2010, and I told them, because I knew better. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm not saying I got an ego, but I knew they were screwing me up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was on Seroquel, which is a mood stabilizer, 1,200 milligrams a day. That will put a horse out for a week. If today I took 25 milligrams, I, wouldn't be, I would be out for 14, 16 hours, not be able to stand up. And I was on 1,200 milligrams a day because I was on so many other pills to jack, you know, counteract. Sure. And, and so... I started to make progress. I went into the, that rehab. I'm like, look, when I walk out of here in 30 days, I'm going to be on no pills. And, and some of those pills are dangerous to come off fast, you know, mm-hmm. so you have to titrate down. And, and when I left, I was still on one because I was getting, like, electrical impulses through my body because I was trying to come off it too fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's how whacked out these, these pills are. So, so that's just my kind of, you know, what the diagnosis were and then, you know, what the doctors thought the solution was. And it's amazing here today. I have none of those diagnoses mm-hmm. and, and, and I take no pills. Now here's the conundrum. The conundrum is there are, there are people, I believe, I believe that there are people that have chemical be- imbalances. You know, we come from, from the dual diagnosis place, right? So we come from the place where no matter what we were putting in our body, we were consuming Massive amounts of, of alcohol, right? And and so, of course, we're going to continue. It, whatever drugs we're on are, are going to be counter-affected by the alcohol consumption. <clears throat> let's just take a person who doesn't walk our path of alcoholism. Or let's talk to the listeners that are probably here. I mean, let's face it. I mean, people t- dialing into Sober Doc Coffee probably have either have an issue with alcoholism or they think they have an, uh, an issue with their consumption of alcohol, right? Right, right. So, so, and let's say that statistically, a lot of these people <clears throat> would qualify, myself included, with dual diagnosis. So, but, but some of these things might be real. I mean, anxiety is a real deal. You know, is it a chemical deal? I'm no doctor. I don't know. And this whole session isn't going to be about our doctoral opinion, but the question is... Absolutely not. We right, are not. Aware. Right. But the question is, at what point do you identify that you're with a pill thrower versus a, a doctor who really is trying to treat an underlying... So let me say it this way. I love your story, right? And we know my story is a little different because I'm still on it. Do I want to be on them? I don't know. Am I seeing a pill thrower? I don't know. Maybe I am. What I know is that they're still working for me. I'm in balance right now in my life. And so I fear getting off them. That that's just being honest. Okay, so you just triggered back to my thought with uh, Blue October. Oh, they don't have to wait till September. No. Uh, September no. of two thousand ninety nine. No. No, exactly. So um, he told the story, um, you know, being on meds, right? Mm-hmm. And and then he told the story about coming off the meds because hey, I'm feeling good. I don't need these meds anymore. Right, sure. And boy, was he wrong. Mm-hmm. He okay. says, hey, I really mm-hmm. needed the meds, right? So I'm just sharing my story. And, and my story may be a piece of other people's story or, I mean, I am truly aware, and we're not medical professionals. Right. I mean, we, right. we have all that disclosure you know, at the right. beginning or end of the uh, show. But, um, you know, what, what, what I do know is there are brain chemistry imbalances, right, that, right. that you know, pharmaceuticals, you know, can and, and do help. Right. And I think that, I think that people should... Pr- I think people should pursue whatever help they can get. I mean, AA is great, right? And and quitting alcohol consumption has changed my life, right? And the program of Alcoholics Anonymous has changed my life. But I also believe I go you and I go to a church where where the the preacher says, "Look, you know, all the answers there's a lot of answers in the Bible. They're not all there. There's also doctors, you know, that, that Well, the can big help. book says that too. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I mean, you know, there is a welcome mat for doctors. I would just say at this point, you know, for me, I handle things differently, mm-hmm. right? When I involve a doctor, and, and hey, 
full transparency, when I was going to all those doctors, I mean, I was wanting a pill. Sure. Because I didn't want to wait five years or one year or three months in AA. I wanted the immediate solution. You know, so I, I, I kind of welcome pills, mm-hmm. you know, but I didn't know the other path, mm-hmm. right? So that's the only path that I kind of knew. And, and, and you know, um, but no, the, the, the big book welcomes outside help. But I let my sponsor know. I let my wife know. I let you know. You know, when I'm going through situations, I have accountability. I'm not making the decisions. Just like this, this um, you know, part-time sponsee I had. I, it wasn't really a sponsee. A close friend in the program. And, and you know, he called up. And, and he was a Xanax addict. Mm-hmm. And I said, dude, you don't sound right. He, uh, he goes, well, it must be my, my new meds. And, and, and I said, uh, I said, well, what meds are you on? He goes, well, I'm on this for, you know, whatever. He said, and I'm on, you know, Xanax. I'm like, dude, what are you taking Xanax for? You're a Xanax addict. Mm-hmm. Like, you've been in rehab and arrested for Xanax. Why? He said, well, the doctor gave him to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, did you tell your doctor you're an alcohol and Xanax addict? He goes, well, no, he wouldn't have given them to me. <laughs> All right, there you go. You know, so, so doctors are great. Right. But I think you need to be fully transparent with them, and you got to have some guardrails and accountability with them. Yeah, I uh, and I also know, t- you know, two things. When I um, I remember being on my my back porch, <clears throat> and uh, I was I was at the moment at the moment I was not under the the, uh, you know, I was not alcohol. I, it was a it was a point of not consumption. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I was dry. I was yeah. I was dry at that point. <clears throat> and it's my over. sister came over, and you know what I? I'll never forget the conversation because what I told her was, people don't understand. It's the chicken and the egg is what I'm getting to. Was I an alcoholic, and then and you then I, had, I cannot yes. believe because most of the time we we don't write in notes. Right. But that was my next point I was going to make. Is Isn't that chicken it, and the egg? Yeah. Was I an alcoholic, and then and then I I uh, exasperated my by my my depression. Or was I depressed, and therefore that fueled my alcoholism? I, you know, I've never been able to answer that question. What I know now is that I did my part to go get better. I had a mantra: get healthy, stay healthy. And I would, I would beg everyone to have that mantra: get healthy, stay healthy. You know, and and that means every day, I'm, I'm get healthy by not consuming alcohol. I stay healthy by filling my body with other stuff. So, yeah, is it the chicken or the egg? I'll never forget the conversation, though. Just tell my sister, people don't understand me. And she looked at me and she said, I get it. And and I just said, okay, somebody somebody's gets it that I've got some mental issues going on here. I will tell you that I have not had a bout of depression since the day I got sober. Not not about a depression. Yeah, that's amazing. That's I've great. had I've had depressing moments. Don't get me wrong. You situational right. depression, but not the, those lulls for days on end. But I also know people who have gotten sober who are still battling anxiety, depression, etc. So I don't really have the answer. No, but I think for for me, I mean, as I look back, for me, I had so many chemicals going into my system, into my brain. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, it, and this is probably a very basic way of looking at it. I needed to clean it out, just get a baseline and start over. Yeah. Right? And you, you know what I love about what you said? You knew better, mm-hmm. right? You said that early on. I knew better. And and I think that at the end of the day, we know when our check engine light's on and when Dude, it's not I on. I love how you put that. Right? <clears throat> and that is so, so sharp. Right. It's And, <clears throat> and so I think you pay attention to yourself. I want to, at this, because I don't want the our t- coffee time to, to pepper away with this. But again, I believe depression, anxiety, well, are we still are trying to stick on the 18 minutes now all of a sudden or what? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but what I, what I want to make sure people know is there is help out there. So if you're not finding it, dude, in are you rooms, reading my notes? Really? Yeah. Oh dude. <laughs> um, there is help. Sorry, out there. I didn't mean to and, jump in. and there's, there's a couple of, there's a couple of things. First of all, just this week, uh, I want to point out that there's a new national hotline for suicide mm-hmm. and it's 988. Just dial 988. And, uh, you know. 988. 988. Okay. That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. And because uh, I think it's real. And, and again, if you're, listening to the, if you're listening to this program, I'm hoping that you're on your road to recovery, somewhere on that road. 
But if you if you veer off the road, if you veer off the road, okay, just know that there's help to get you back on the path. And my guess is that when you reach out for help, somebody's going to suggest getting back into the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous to at least take care of that part of your problem. Yeah, and along that line, a little, little asterisk to that is there are treatment centers out there today yep. that are dual diagnosis treatment centers. Right. They specialize in that. For example, I have a sponsee, and he was just in treatment center down in Florida, and they, they have two centers. They mm-hmm. have just the alcohol one, mm-hmm. and then they have the dual diagnosis one. Right. Um, you know, and if you got two issues, mm-hmm. you're going to the other one. And my doctor specialized in that as well. That's awesome. That's they were, great. They were schooled in that, and, and it's the real deal. Yeah, so as we finish up here, you know, kind of, you know, the way I'd like to capsulize it is, and it just clicked, is it, it, it takes us back to – a saying, a mantra, a fact is there is a solution. Doesn't matter if you got five or six, two or three, or you're just an alcoholic. Is that a Glenn line, or did you read that in a book somewhere? You know, I, I found this book. I was reading in the airport. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's blue, 164 pages. The first 164 pages is pretty, pretty powerful, called the AA Big Book. But there's a chapter called There Is a Solution. Mm-hmm. And um, what I, I've really surrendered, and, and I believe the words of AA, it doesn't say there might be. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say there could be. It doesn't say, well, if you jump through all these hoops or, you know, blah, blah, if you're the blessed one. Mm-hmm. It's just there is. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have both proven that, mm-hmm. and we both live it today. Yeah. And uh, there, there's hope for others. Right, right. So uh, let's conclude by saying one— Bring us home. Yeah, bring you home. Uh, if you got nowhere else to turn— What's our email address? We can point you. Yeah, we got some. We got some man. resources well beyond what's up in our resource center. We got some great We're resources. We've got some great relationships yeah. out there. People that just love to help. In addition to us, and it's a podcast mm-hmm. at sober dot coffee. And we promise not to. No way, man. Totally anonymous. Yeah, I know totally where you're going. anonymous. Number one and number two. We promise not to give you our advice, but what we will do is point you to some great resources so that can help you figure out. Am I one of those six things? Am I, right. am I dual diagnosed? And then more importantly, my prayer for you is that you continue your journey, not worrying about the stigma or trying to figure it all out. Just take one step forward today. Get healthy. Stay healthy. Man, that's great, brother. Great to have you back from up there, from nowhere land, way up in northern Michigan, God's country. Hey. Welcome back. Hey. Hey. I know. All right, man. Have a great I love you, man. Have a great one. See you next week. All right. Later. All right. Thanks for joining us for today's coffee chat. To contact the show, email us at podcast at sober.coffee. If you need immediate help, the AA hotline is 800-839-1686. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. Remember, Mike and Glenn are sharing their own journey on the path to recovery. Any suggestions, medical or otherwise, are their own experiences and should not be viewed as professional advice. See you next week, and remember, there is a solution.